Hey guys, Paul here, and I just finished up a pair of bedside tables for my daughter and her partner, and I wanted to share some of the project highlights uh, with you. Uh, I used actually a plan from Woodsmith for these, which I don't normally do, but this happens to be the, the exact piece that my daughter picked out. She sent me a, an image of it, and it turned out there was a plan from Woodsmith. So, I downloaded the plan, and boy, did that make life easy. Although I did make a lot of changes, and I'll talk uh, about some of those. Um, not really aesthetically, but just from a technique standpoint. I used uh, dominoes uh, for joinery rather than traditional mortise and tenon, uh, which you know simplified things uh, for me, and um, but required some adaptation. Uh, I used walnut instead of cherry neither here nor there, but uh, that was my daughter's choice. Uh, and I did hand cut dovetails rather than uh, router cut, which I guess not a big difference there either. But just wanted to share with you a, a few of the, the highlights in some of the specific areas of the project. All right, so first, the materials I used. I mentioned walnut, so this is air-dried walnut that was cut down about 10 plus years ago by Matt Collins. Uh, and it is uh, just one of my favorite materials to work with. Now, I like air-dried in general, but particularly in walnut because my daughter wanted some sapwood to show in the project. And air-dried walnut has just a much better contrast between heartwood and sapwood. Normally when they kiln dry walnut, they, uh, they steam it to blend together the colors of the, uh, of the sapwood and the heartwood. I like that contrast. I like to pop a little bit. So that's, that's one of the key uh, differences. And my daughter also picked out some hardware that she really liked on Etsy. And I love this stuff. And it's just kind of a classic arts and crafts look. I'll give you a link to the, the, uh, the project plan on Woodsmith and the, uh, the hardware that I got on Etsy. Um, I, I love this. And just a tip for you, I always buy, when I make uh, anything with drawers and use mechanical pulls, I always buy extra pulls and just throw them in the drawers so that people have them. That way, if there's ever any uh, issue, they have a, a spare. Uh, otherwise, trying to find something like that after the fact, you're, you're, you could run into problems, especially with something as obscure as coming from Etsy. And these are, these are fairly unique. All right, and for the finish, I used my typical go-to Minwax Wipe-On Poly. You can get it at any hardware store, uh, woodworking supply, whatever, or you can get it online. I'll give you a link to it down below as well. But Wipe-On, I did three coats of Wipe-On, and then on the top only, three coats of Spray-On uh, Poly, min, same brand, Minwax. I really like that stuff. On the top, I also used grain filler, and I'll give you a link to a video that I did on that process. Very easy and really gives you a nice lustrous uh, finish on the top. All right, then just a few key areas of the project that I'll call out kind of as highlights from the process standpoint. First of all, the legs, and which is pretty typical on any kind of complex table project like this. The legs, you spend a lot of time because they frame the whole thing. All your joinery comes together in the legs. And so I found that I spent a lot of time figuring out exactly where my dominoes were gonna go uh, and then machining those. And then I used a router table for uh, some of the uh, panel joinery as well. These are inch and three quarter square legs uh, with domino joinery on every side of them. Also like this nice chamfer detail on the corner. Uh, that really kind of, uh, I think that's a, a real nice subtle uh, but prominent detail. Uh, I like the arches that I cut. I cut these on the bandsaw. I did this on the router table with a 45 degree chamfer bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, the legs spent a little bit of time kind of getting that project off to a good start. Another important detail that I really like, and this is almost all solid wood. The only plywood is the drawer bottom, uh, but everything else is solid wood. So that means you have to deal with you know, the wood movement in some way. And so the project plan, and I stayed pretty true to the plan in this respect, use uh, on this for the side panels uses a tongue and groove joinery uh, and these panels float so these these are allowed to remain in movement uh, 
forever. And so one key point that I would make uh, as if you take on this project or similar projects is give yourself plenty of room on those. Don't try to get them too tight right out of the gate if you're putting a film-based finish on it like polyurethane because it's it gonna tend to bind up on you. And I had that one time on a project like this where I had a floating panel and it, the finish was enough to bind it up and it, that panel ended up cracking because it couldn't expand and contract. But these, I left plenty of room for expansion and contraction and I, I really feel good with how they turned out. Another interesting detail on this is, again, because it's solid wood, this panel, this shelf, uh, the lower shelf, is fixed to the front rail, so it's glued here, but it is not glued anywhere else. So it is allowed to expand and contract. It sits in a groove around the perimeter uh, with plenty of room to expand and contract. And I was, you know, really took, took my time to make sure I left a, a good eighth inch of expansion room around that post in the back uh, and made sure that, that that shelf could freely move before, uh, before I glued it in to the front. All right, and, and the drawers on these, I mentioned I cut hand cut dovetails. I used, of course, walnut for the drawer fronts, and I used cherry uh, around the perimeter. So cherry is a secondary wood. I love how it goes with walnut, uh, especially as it ages, but that contrast, that subtle contrast, I think really looks nice. Um, I did half blind dovetails on the front and through dovetails on the back just because they're easier um, and, and quicker. The original plan called for half blind on the front and the back and that's because they used a router jig uh, that, that was only designed for half, uh, half blind. I used a uh, cherry plywood bottom just because I had some left over. I was leaning toward all along toward toward using a solid wood bottom and I just kind of for the sake of uh, time and convenience and the fact that I had some quarter inch cherry plywood sitting there I decided to, to take that uh, that shortcut but you can't really tell from the top and nobody nobody cares except really me and maybe you uh, but that was a shortcut that I took uh, and I did not use any mechanical slides. I just was careful to fit the drawer so that it would slide in just nice and not a lot of wiggle room. So, and then finally the top, just some glued up walnut planks attached from the bottom with expansion and contraction uh, holes that the uh, screws are, are fastened through. So I just kind of elongated those with the drill uh, before I attached it. Uh, and then there's some nice subtle details on here uh, down below with a, with a little bit of a chamfer and a, uh, an OG on the bottom. Uh, nice, nice little detail that I just kind of followed from the plan itself. So with that, uh, feel free to ask any questions down below if you're interested in taking this project on. I highly recommend it. The, the plans were fantastic uh, and really gave me a nice roadmap to, to walk through it. Um, and again, with the adaptations that I made with um, a couple of, in a couple areas, but you can make it your own. I stayed true to the exact size uh, that they had in the plan. But anyway, let me know down below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer whatever I can and hope you'll subscribe and come back to the Toolmetrics channel. I do a lot of woodworking projects, uh, tool related videos, and some wood turning from time to time as well. Thanks again for watching.